Well, the Draw Kings rolled into town, into Sheffield yesterday, and they came away with, well, what you would expect, a draw. Ought to get another point. That's all we seem to be able to do lately. But is it a good one? Is it a bad one? Hmm, we'll get on to that. But welcome to another review of this Oxford United season. It seems like an eternity since we last played a game, but good news for me, I actually got to attend a game for once. Living in Sheffield, I was able to make the short trip over to Hillsborough, but I was slumming it in with the Wednesday fans, because as much as I am an Oxford United fan, I am not going to turn down that free ticket. Yes, I am too cheap to do that. So I'll, all of my screams of anguish or um, things I were happy with were done behind a very under my breath for a muffled glass so people didn't know I was an Oxford fan. And looking at the team sheets, this Oxford United lineup starting to look quite decent, isn't it? Josh, Murphy, Yannick, Wiltshire on the bench. What are these days we're living in? But there was a noticeable absentee. That is Elliot Moore, who was ill. So Sam Long came into the centre-back spot, um, which meant Lewis Bate played in midfield alongside Brannigan and uh, McGuane. And it had Taylor, Bowden and Marcus Brown up top. As I tweeted earlier on in the week, uh, Sheffield Wednesday did have quite a few players out. Most notably is Barry Bannon, who hasn't missed a game for for them for a very long time but he is clearly if not their best player one of their best players so that was good news for Oxford United also defender um I always say his name wrong but he was a guy who played for Rotherham last year Michael Ikiwi you can tell me how that's pronounced um but he's a really good defender um so again another good um good for Oxford that he wasn't playing but Wednesday are flying high at the top of League One and they would have fully expected to beat us today um, and after their draw against Exeter the week before, they would have liked to have put the annoyance of that right and get a big win just before Christmas. But I've got to tell you, 22,000 people at Hillsborough, and other than the fact that they do their old um, song at the start, which they, I feel they've nicked from Wolverhampton Wanderers, um, Hi Ho Sheffield Wednesday, the atmosphere felt really flat, really, really flat at the start of the game and even at the first like 20, 30 minutes of the game. And I would say that is down to the way Oxford played and Oxford started really well in this match and really had a good chance to go ahead early doors. Marcus Brown, who a couple of times got in behind on the uh, right-hand side, got the second time he got in, seemed like he was clearly in on goal, decided to sort of like roll the ball over his studs to take it round the keeper, ended up falling on his ass. looked really, really stupid. You just think, just take the shot, Marcus. And I've got to say, Marcus Brown in this game, I can't fault his effort, but his quality was definitely waning in this one. And haven't really seen the best of him in terms of being clinical this season. Hopefully that does improve because you can't fault his, you really just can't fault his effort. He is, he is trying, he is like getting into these positions. But there, was a, there was a really good worked free kick Ox had had in the second half as well where he got into space down the right-hand side, but his cross was just miles over here and um, went out for a... Oh, I think Oxford just didn't get anything out of it. As I said, for the first 30 minutes, Sheffield Wednesday just weren't in the game. Oxford were really controlling this one. Uh, maybe I'm being a bit hard. Maybe it was 20 minutes, but for early stages of this game, Oxford was certainly controlling it, uh, winning a lot of the midfield battles. Sheffield Wednesday's passing was really sloppy, and Oxford were picking them off and getting joy, and really nice moves between the likes of Taylor and Bowden. He got Brannigan into play on the uh, left-hand side, who had a shot which was well saved by Sheffield Wednesday's hero of the day, Cameron Dawson, who came up with one of many uh, key saves to deny Cameron Brannigan there. Oxford's wastefulness, um, as much as you were pleased at how they started, you did know that Sheffield Wednesday would grow into this game. And they did get better as the half went on. They started to test Oxford a lot more and started to create chances themselves. There was a good effort by Johnson, which uh, spun just wide where he got in space. And a lot of it came from them counter-attacking on Oxford, really. And then they kind of explo exploited the space with the likes of Patterson, Palmer, Johnson, James getting down the wings. Eastwood had to make a good save as well from it was either Patterson or it was Windass uh, in the first half. But yeah, Sheffield Wednesday certainly got into it a lot more. Uh, maybe could have found themselves a goal up. Um, they, they did have some good pressure. There were some great blocks in there. I thought Oxford United's defending was really good all afternoon today. Uh, Findlay, Long, Brown really stood up strong. I'm not going to put Anderson in there because as much as he enjoy, I enjoy watching him play, I, I really like him in his team. He scares the life out of me when we're defending. Sheffield Wednesday were booed off at half time. So maybe that's a little feather in the cap of well, how well Oxford United has played. And second half was 
a very, very 50-50 half. Um, it, you, you look at it, there are some absolute guilt-edged chances that Oxford United missed, but you can't say Sheffield Wednesday didn't miss chances as well. It was a much more even second half in this one. You do see it a lot where in the second half of games where Oxford are away, they do lose a little bit of composure when the, set, when the, away, when the home side gets up a little head of steam. You did see elements of this, but one guy I thought was excellent in midfield was Lewis Bate arguably our man of the match. I thought he's really growing into this season. It's taken him a bit of a while to get used to playing at League One, uh, but I think he's doing that now, and he was really composed on the ball, as was the likes of Jevon Anderson as well. I must say there was times he got it, and he wasn't panicked in possession, and he, he helped slow the game down, which is what Oxford needed. Of course, there were the pantomime theatric from Oxford United in terms of goalie going down injured with cramp. Every time Wednesday got ahead of steam, Oxford would um, get manage to get a drinks break and slow it down. So those things, I, I never like to see those things happen, but unfortunately they do. Michael Smith missed a, well, didn't miss it. He just didn't get on the end of a cross, um, which really was centimetres away from him, really would have been a tap in if he got any sort of contact on it. Um, and I'm actually surprised he didn't start the game. I know Lee Gregory's great, but I'm surprised Michael Smith didn't start. Uh, Wednesday fans, if you're listening to this, just let me know why he didn't start, because he's really caused lots of trouble in the past. Uh, certainly when we played Rotherham at the end of last season, he was a real thorn in our side. Big, powerful striker. I'd have thought he would have started in this one. But Lee Gregory, also great striker he Eastwood made a good save to deny him in the second half as well another good game for Eastie clean sheet for Eastie doesn't happen very often but the mystery men for Oxford United did come onto this game Josh Murphy came on and luck annoyingly came on for Brannigan hopefully he's not too badly injured but then we did see Yannick as well Yannick Wilchuk for the first time in an Oxford United um season uh one of my words I'm trying to say I'm just delighted to see him finally on the pitch we saw in the brief periods they were on the pitch how dangerous that they potentially can be uh Yannick Vilcic very powerful very pacey Josh Murphy very pacey very skillful and there were some times where this game did revolve did sort of dissolve into like uh both sides break counter-attacking on each other but when Oxford did counter-attack and you had the likes of Murphy in there you certainly Felt Oxford could score a goal in this game. And we missed two guilt-edged chances in this second half. And let's not sugarcoat over that anymore. Oxford get a break. Uh, yeah, Wilshut has got a shot on the edge of the box. It is dealt with by Dawson, but can only pull it out to Taylor. Taylor's effort thought it was going to go in, but superbly cleared off the line. I didn't get who cleared that off the line. But it drops to James Henry. He is six yards out with an open goal. All he has to... He could even take a touch and tap it into the corner. But he blazes it over the crossbar. It is a as bad a miss as you're going to see. This is a worse miss, a way worse miss than Kyle Joseph's miss against uh, Plymouth earlier on in the season. This is a horror show for the guy who scored the winning goal in this ground a season ago. But then it was another Gill edge opportunity for Oxford United. And if you're Carl Robinson, you've got to be pulling your hair out as to how Oxford didn't win this game. Gatlin O'Donka came on for Matty Taylor and um, won a penalty in injury time in this one. He spun a defender, a little bit clumsy for the defender, gives the referee a decision to make and he gives the penalty. Not too many complaints from the Wednesday players, so I think they knew it was a bit of a clumsy foul. But that gave a player to step up and take it. And although he missed a sitter, I was sat there thinking, James Henry's got to step up and take this and smash it in. But it fell to Josh Murphy and I just felt... Oh, I'm not sure about this one. Um, and lo and behold, it was a poorly hit penalty. Well saved by Dawson, but a poor penalty by Josh Murphy. And Oxford missed a chance to win it late at Hillsborough for a second season in a row. And in fact, Wednesday did end up getting the last chance of the game from a corner where a header narrowly went over the bar. Nil-nil draw. Um, the game was probably better than nil-nil draw, but uh, Sheffield Wednesday were booed off. So fans, their fans, not happy with this one. Oxford fans, yeah, I think if you offered us nil-nil before the start of the game, we would have taken it. Um, but with the way that game panned out, you were just left there thinking, oh, I left the ground pretty angry thinking that is three points that we've just thrown away there difficult to really criticise this Oxford United performance too much because I thought they did play well. It's just that clinicalness that needs to improve. Hopefully it will. It does still give me encouragement that things can get better in the second half of the season, but boy, do they need to improve quite dramatically if we're going to make any fists at the playoffs. As I say, no blame on Robinson on this one. I thought he's put a good side out and Oxford have played well in this game. 
It's definitely a frustrating one as I do my Burt Ward Batman thing there. What am I doing? And we roll on to Ipswich Town on uh, Boxing Day, uh, which was a game where Oxford United were fans terrified about playing. But they usually end in nil-nil as well when we play Ipswich, so who knows what's going to be. But Ipswich are flying high at the top of the table. But if Oxford turn up and play like this, I think we've got a good chance of getting something out of the game. Wednesday fans, let me know your comments down below, how you feel about your team, how you feel about Darren Moore, yada, 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 whether you think you're going to go up. And um, yeah, and uh, th thanks for not running me out of Hillsborough um, being an Oxford fan in the home end. But um, that is all from me. Leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your Christmas, and I'll be back to do the Boxing Day game very soon.